What pal, boy, we live. Let's see if anybody stays. What pal, boy, we live. Let's see if anybody stays. One second. We got a mix up. I had YouTube playing in the background. That's a cardinal sin. That don't make no sense like that, no. Oh, how's your day going? Mine was going good, but it, it's not no more. The weather's getting bad. The winds are getting bad. I went to eat. I got no motivation for nothing. So, Chubbs, go play. Look. So <clears throat> I'm early. God, we got five people in here. Lord, I bet you two of them's me. Hi, Danny. Take these out. I might even drink a beer. Probably not. Oh, uh, yeah, we got. Thanks, brother. Thanks for stopping by, Canadian. Proud get outdoors, my Canadian and a cousin. It's nice to have some days off. Uh, uh, I thought I'd have some time off, but it's not working. Been working in the green in the greenhouses, just like you, man. Um, also trying to do some figuring on the raised bed, see what's going on. Uh, got all the tomatoes strung up yesterday. Kind of taking a look at them, seeing which ones uh, I want to cut the suckers. We haven't started with the suckers yet. Um, so trying to figure out how many suckers I want to leave. They have some new varieties we're trying this year. And I'm thinking about leaving a couple extra suckers on some of the lower ends of the greenhouse, seeing how that works out, kind of experiment with it. The, uh, going to be a lot of experimentation this year, even though the, uh, we did well last year with the third um adding the third greenhouse with the extra room we did remove or we're not using four of the rows in the previous two greenhouses for tomatoes the, the edges are too short so we're trying to use them for peppers i picked up some more peppers yesterday because i'm me i had seven buckets available i needed seven plants and i picked up 14. <laughs> so um yeah, some of the ones on the north side are doing better than the ones on the south side. We've been getting a lot of wind in lately. So the uh the we've been unable to reduce the amount of wind. It's not slowing down. So hey there, Mr. Robert, Lewis, um, Peanut, and G Canadian Proud, get outdoors. Let me go ahead and knock these out. Uh, uh it's Kenny, Sheena D, my chubs. Uh, I think that's it. The, uh, yeah, the wind on the side, on the south side has been slowing down the growth on the, on the peppers uh, a lot. Um, the, and we're getting more wind. We had wind for about four and a half hours yesterday. That was somewhere between 30 and 35 miles an hour for four to five hours constant, depending on where you found, you know, where we looked, but it, it was some good wind, a lot of rain. Um, was able to get outside. The wind's already starting to pick up. It's showing it somewhere around 20, 25 miles an hour. Um, it's blowing the tomatoes around pretty much in the <clears throat> in the greenhouse that I didn't have stringed up yet. And, and I'm having to work above them. I don't want to break the plants. They're getting tangled up in the ladder. I don't like using ladders. If you've seen the video today, uh, I don't fall. I splat. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to break the plants, so they're, they're going to be beat up a little bit more today from the rain. I did post the link if anyone would want to come up here and visit, talk about you know what they have going on, what I have going on. They're more than welcome. Um, Mr. Robert, it's not a meeting. It's a root sniffing event, so you might want to leave. I know that um, you're John's understudy. You're trying to be his protege. Um, he's the marshal, and you're the marshmallow. 
and I'm I'm not, I'm not gonna put up with no ridiculousness in in, in in this today. None at all. There ain't gonna be it. If the good boy shows up, I'm not gonna put up with him either. Just, oh, pow! Like that, you cut that short. Um, as far as the Dollar Tree Strawberry Tower, it is really, really working well. Um, I had there's not a whole bunch of videos out on YouTube, but there's none that I was able to find that had a setup like that. There was very few that was similar. So I took what I, I had an idea. I ran with it. 90% of it didn't work. So I had to drop back, punt, start over again. Anyway, to this point, it's working well. Um, all the research I did for it, the, uh, the PPM, a lot of the people said that they like to run their PPM on the strawberries somewhere is between 11 and 1300. So I was running it at 1200. <clears throat> we did get strawberries off of it. They fruited well, but the plants weren't growing well. And what we did was while I was on rotation last time, we got to the bottom of the bucket and I told Sheena just to add it, fill it up with water again. So she filled up about half of it with water, which basically probably half we, we probably dropped it down somewhere around seven eight hundred ppm and by doing that the plants have really taken off um i did fill it up again add the nutrients back to it at 800 um added 800 ppm of nutrients filled up and it, they're really really taken off so um i'm gonna try to work on doing the video if i can at least get the the video recorded, I'll be able to hopefully edit it on my next set of rotation. But the time's getting short already with so much we got to do. Um, again, I'll share the link again if anyone would like to come up. Mr. Robert, you can talk about why you haven't posted your karaoke video yet, you and John. Um, also in the greenhouses, uh, to this point, we're still using 800 ppm for the... The fertilizer solution it's uh it's working good you've seen it in the videos the, the the weather has been great it's been ideal for us growing it's been down into the mid 50s low 60s at night getting up into the 70s mid 70s to mid 80s and the tomato plants are really enjoying it in the greenhouse um it's it's fun it's a lot of work right now this these, these, this two weeks is going to be the most work that I'll be putting in to be able to maintain the greenhouse, hanging the strings and finishing up and cleaning up a few things that need to be taken care of. But um, the first pruning and hanging the strings is usually the most, you know, intensive work whenever you are dealing with a hydroponic greenhouse. The only other times you're really doing any work is when you're removing the perlite, cleaning the perlite, storing it up for the following year. <clears throat> the captains are not immune, Mr. Robert. Not immune at all. It's it, you're gonna you're gonna get a very stiff penalty if you don't choose because you already said in the live stream and in a couple comments that you were gonna be participating in it. Oh look, the marshal comes in here and he's being nice. John, call you out right now too, brother. Where's your video? Where's your karaoke song? You agreed to do it too. Angie, you're right. No one's immune. You go ahead. You got to do it. Everybody, we need more people to do it. It's all fun. <laughs> you lied. Um, so I did receive the secret seeds from the two people I agreed to do the secret seeds with. Um, pretty much figured out what both of them are. I got a really good idea, at least the variety of what it is, not the exact species of what it is. Um, I will be doing a, a video on that. I have a lot of videos to catch up with also. Um, <laughs> it's just time after time after time. It's always something. Um, the weather's bad. We got baseball started up now. The greenhouse is like really kicking in. We got some chickens in last night. Uh, we got them donated to us. What happened was one of Sheena's friends called 
and she bought some chickens at Tractor Supply, like 15 minutes or she bought them, drove home, calls. Hey, I bought some chickens. What do I need to do with that? Well, Sheena gave me the phone. I started talking to her about everything she needed to do. She's like, well, I ain't got time for all that. I'm like, yeah, well, you just come on. You know, it's, it's super easy. It, it sounds like a lot more work than what it is. And I would say talking to her for about 15 minutes. And she's like, you want these chickens? I'm not, no, I'm not taking your chickens. You know, she, she had four chickens. I'm like, I'm not taking your chickens. Um, you know, we got off the phone with her a little while later. She texted Sheena like, please come get these chickens. I really don't want them. I don't have time for them. Sheena was joking. She's like, we'll take them if you pay child support. And she's like, that's fine. <laughs> I'll pay for the feed and everything. I just don't want these chickens. So neither to say long story longer. We ended up getting the free chickens. We got four chickens. Then it worked out good because the 15 that we had ordered from um, McMurray Hatcheries, that's like the fifth time I've ordered from them, and I, I, they didn't give me nothing free. No, I don't even get a discount, but it's like the fifth time I order from them, and they're amazing. Um, chickens came in this morning. They all look healthy. Um, they're running around like they, zone, like they drank a monster. They, they're getting after it, so... We went from, uh, oh, and we got an extra one. They sent us an extra surprise chicken. We didn't get specific breeds. We got the mixed um, brown egg layer, large brown egg layer mix. So we're not sure what they are until they get a little bit bigger. We'll be able to check. And then they sent us one of their free, rare, unusual birds is normally what they send with the order. So we ended up with uh, 16 chick support. No, you didn't, John. The, the, the karaoke deadline is not until Friday, I think it is, or Saturday. So you have plenty of time. Plenty of time. <clears throat> plenty of time. Um, They did, huh? I, I didn't see that video, Angie. I was worried about that. We ordered the chicks way back in um, January, I think it was. Yes, Sheena, that's what I just said. Your friend gave us four. Pay attention, Chubbs. Come on. Uh, and I'm not being disrespectful to my wife. We call each other Chubbs. Like some people call their, um, their husband and their wife Babe or Sugar Plum or something like that. We call each other chubs. We've been doing it for 10 years, basically since the second date we went on. Um, so don't don't send me no hate mail. She started it earlier too. So um, yeah, Angie, I was I was worried about that. Um, the bird flu. We do have uh I need to quit saying uh we have them separated. The four we got from well, the four that we got and the 16 this morning are all together. But we're gonna, they're going to be separated for at least two weeks. We'll be keeping them in the house and then moving them outside. And they'll probably still be another five, six weeks, seven weeks before we actually put them with the other ones. John, you don't know the joke. So I'm, I'm sure unless, yeah, we're trying to keep this PG-13. But I'm sure you could figure it out. Um. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to come up, y'all are welcome. Uh, I was planning on staying about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. The weather's not that not that great. The uh, the greenhouses are doing amazing. The raised beds are doing choo choo. Um, we could talk about oh man, the karaoke. Uh, we, the Chedworth karaoke challenge is amazing. We're having so much fun with it. Um, Jilly from Belly Acres number three. She did her song. She put it out this morning. Rim Family Forms put out his in French. Love the song. Uh, we, we do a lot of, well, not me personally, but there's a lot of French and Cajun music around here. And that, that song he did would fit right in if they threw some accordion in with his guitar. The, the man is badass on that guitar. He did amazing. Um, gear, sang some Elvis awesome you know it's jeff <laughs> jeff hit it out the park everybody did it was great it was great you know it's so much fun to do something like that um 
Um, hey, Miss Maureen, uh, the Strawberry Tower is doing well. The talk, talked about it a, a little bit earlier, but what I did was I was running the PPM in the tower for the hydroponic solution somewhere around 1,200. And we were getting fruit, but the plants wasn't growing real well. So we actually cut it back to about 800. And the growth on the plants are actually doing amazing. Um, I did a short a couple of days ago and showing the, the showing how much is grown. Um, did it, like I said, it was a short, so there wasn't a whole bunch of, of talk about it. But I think I feel comfortable enough now to actually share how I built it. It looks like it's working. It's been working fine. So I'm, I'm going to do the, the video on it, the build video. I need to redo some of it because I've changed some of the portions how I did it from the original build. So I need to redo some of that, but I'm hoping to have it, you know, at least um, videoed before I have to go back on rotation. And when I start my rotation, I hope to have time to be able to edit it, but it is doing really well. The basil took off the last week and a half, two weeks. I gave away a Walmart bag um, this weekend to one of my neighbors and I probably still have another Walmart bag full. <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. One of them is an ever bearing and the other one is a June bearing. The it's, it's two different varieties. I don't remember the names offhand. I have the, the little sticks in them and we, um, it, it's local, it's, it's local varieties. So hopefully they'll last a little bit better. I am noticing that the ones on the South side, they're closer to the plastic and they're having some issues right now with the heat. So it, 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 it does really look like um, I'm going to have to move them. I have an idea. Um, we're going to be adding on to – I'm going to get with you in a minute, Lewis. I just want to finish talking about this. We have, we're have we going to be adding on to the, uh, the chicken pen because we have so many chickens that we just added. Um, so <clears throat> once we add on to that, I'm thinking about putting up a canopy, probably 8 foot wide by 20 foot long, <clears throat> because I have enough buckets to do at least three more. I'm sorry, enough pots to do at least three more of those. And I want to get a little bit more wind on them as far as uh, a little bit more air movement and further away from the plastic to hopefully they'll be able to make it through the uh, through the summertime out here. Um, Lewis, how's it going, brother? It's going. How's it going with you? Can't complain at all, man. Can't complain. The snow's off the ground over there? Yeah, it is. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Got some stuff poking dirt outside. Uh, my rhubarb's poking through the dirt, and some garlic I planted last year poked through the dirt. Nice. Nice. Hey, Vandal of the Land, how's it going, brother? Just trying to see. Yeah, the weather's bad over here, and it's getting worse. Um, it, it's going to continue to get worse till about three o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, so I just decided to jump on here and and talk a little bit, and I'm waiting for Mister Robert. Hopefully, he's warming up his voice to give us a taste of his karaoke that he's going to be putting out for the Car Shed Wars Karaoke Challenge. Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. I think it's okay. I, I think you can't back out, Mr. Robert. There's a lot of people waiting. Wait a minute. Hold on. What is this backing out thing? I didn't go into the shoot, okay? You I did. didn't go in, so I can't back out. You agreed on the live stream that you were going to do it. John did also that you were going to take part in it because it's fun. And you've also yeah. talked in a couple comments in other people's videos that they've done that you were working on your song and which one to do. I think I was hacked or something. That wasn't me talking. That was, was John agreed that agreed that I was going to sing. No, it wasn't John. Yeah. You agreed. I. It's on the live stream. We can easily go back and, and get it. Uh, and I had to watch it after because I didn't. After the second hour of the live stream the other night, I didn't remember it. So I had to. Go brother, back. I, I don't sing. You, you're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to. Oh, Lord. Hey, Q, how's it going? Yeah, so. Now John's member talks all the time. <clears throat> Taught me into getting into trouble. 
That's <laughs> the one. That's the one I want to see because she's the one saying, "Hey, get him to sing. You got to sing. You got to sing." I don't want to sing. You got to sing. Hey, James, how's it going? Um, yeah, you got to sing, Mister Robert. Come on. Even Jeff did it. I'm. And Jeff, Jeff did good with that. That well, it, it, <laughs> he did good with that. I wasn't expecting that, but that didn't count for Jeff singing. When, when that, it does count. <laughs> yeah. It does count. I mean, they do it all the time on the radio. I mean, they got people just stand up there and they modulate their voice and they sell records. Jeff could really? be selling records. Yeah. What? Not in country music. But yeah, in different different genres of music, that's all they do. They sit there with modulated voices and get after it. Human music, yes. People for people, for people, and they do well with it. Them young kids like that. Hmm. Maybe I need to look into that. <laughs> I asked I asked him how he did it. He he didn't come up too good. He he said it takes a long time, a lot of practice, a lot of warming up. But. Hmm. Lord, I was watching your video, the one where you got the hooks going up there, where you were right. smart, not not getting on the ladder, you putting the hooks up there. What are those hooks made of that you're hanging from? The the tomatoes, the ones I'm hanging up in the air with the string on them. Yeah, that's called a tama hook. It's made from a uh, galvanized wire. Um, big galvanized wire. Yeah, they it's it's they're not that expensive actually. Um, I think you gotta you could I think you can purchase them on Amazon for last time I checked maybe a dollar a piece if you buy a case of them. But there's almost three hundred of them in a case from Johnny Seeds. Yeah, uh, if you buy a case of them, it's like a hundred bucks for three hundred of them. Oh shit! I don't understand that word. Did you purchase what? Is, what is purchase? <laughs> I make everything. We'll put some clothes hangers up there. Well, and the reason I was saying that is I've known quite a few people that's tried to uh, to do them and to, to, to make them homemade. And yeah. they work out. Um, the tension and the tensile strength of them doesn't work out to where it wants to hold. And um, by the time you end up buying the proper materials, to, you know, the proper wire to use and a proper – uh, cable yeah. Yeah. It, it's cheaper to buy them unless uh, you steal some rebar off the job site well you know, rebar, rebar would work that would be some really intense uh bending though hey my yeah, friend Garden, just... thank you for stopping by bending rebar isn't as hard as you think you just gotta let it sit in some you get some like a fire going and get some coals where yeah. you want to bend it you heat it up and then it's it becomes a little easier to bend because it's heated up Hey, Miss Lori. Yeah, the rebar is super easy to work with. It, it heats fast, and it'll heat in small portions to where you can bend it where you need it to be bent. Um, but this is like a 12-gauge wire, almost like a 10-penny nail. But the tensile strength of it, I'm not sure how they do it if they uh, – if they, you know, bend it and heat it to strengthen it. Uh, but we've I've, I've known five or six different people try all kind of stuff. The only thing they've come close enough to be able to figure out to use was uh, like a titanium uh, rod that you um, not MIG weld or no, TIG weld with. And it, you can get like 15 of them for the price you'd make with one with that titanium. Yeah, the titanium don't cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, and it's... But I didn't know whether those were homemade or not. I didn't no. know how what you had going there. They look pretty slick from what I could see. <laughs> what when I first got the green when I first started my greenhouse at the property, Pop's greenhouse now, um, we hung the cables up and everything, and I had picked up a whole bunch of those hooks, like I'm using for my, my hook to hang the strings and everything up. Um, shoot, man, I must have picked up Oh, we had a basket full. We went to dirt cheap, and there was a basket full. I picked up for ten dollars. There was turnbuckles. There was all kind of stuff. I'll never use. I'll never come close to using everything. But there was a lot of those hooks. So what we actually did was take a two by four, and take a, a, a inch and a half hole, and drill drill the inch and a half hole through the two by four. Then I cut it where the um 
cut the hole in half to where I had like a six inch piece on each side of the two by four. And I just wrapped, I tied the string around the, uh, the hook and I wrapped it. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I tied the string around the hook to where it wouldn't, if it got to the end, it wouldn't just release. And I wrapped it. That little arc in the, the two by four works the same way as that does, but it's a lot of work. It, it was, <laughs> Go ahead. I was I was looking at that and I was thinking if those were made out of something that was magnetic, a magnet on the end of a, a stick would get that right up there where you want. And all this got is a way to the string, set it up there, let it hook, and drag it right off the drag yeah. the stick right off of it and leave it hanging. I, I never even thought about a magnet. It, it looks like some type of galvanized galvanized metal. It probably would work great. Um yeah. I just I had that hook and I figured it out by mistake at the at Pop's greenhouse. It's some uh, two and a half inch square tubing. It runs the uh, it is them old carports. You know them little eight hundred dollar carports you used to see on the side of the roads. People were selling all the time. Yeah, that's what I built the first greenhouse out of. So when you're hanging it, I, I actually use that same setup out there. So when you're hanging them up there, you have plenty of room. Well, over here. I had to figure out a different way because if I would catch it at the top of the hook, like I would at the pro at the uh, pop screen house, the the tit on the top of the hanger, the tomahawk would hit the plastic before I was high enough up to get it over the wire. So that's whenever I started, you know, hanging it from the bottom, and then I figured out that if I pulled it down a little bit, the strength, not the strength, but the uh, the string would tighten it enough and it would hold itself straight to where I could just reach up there and put it. Let yeah. me take a second. Hey there, Simple Grower. Thanks for stopping by. Canadian Proud, uh, oh, not Canadian, Dance Permaculture. What's up, brother? Uh, my granny's garden. They got 14 people in here right now. Whoa. Um. So, yeah, that's... That's a neat little stick you made. You got put it up there. That's, that, that right there was some control on it. You know, it wasn't going nowhere until you unhooked it a little like it, it does, and like I said, it, it works perfect with the bend of the hook and just pulling it down a little bit. The, the string actually pulls it taut in the uh, in the little saddle where the hook is. Yeah. And you can wiggle it pretty easy, and you just put it up there, and you pull it down. And I, like I said, I couldn't find it because I got the Colt uses it as his sword. Um, I have another one that just has the regular hook on the end. I didn't bend that, that weird S on it, and I just I use it to hook the hook on the bottom when I want to lower, and I just reach up with the other one and, and push it over. It works amazing. Man, that made me laugh right there. I'm trying to hold it back. Yeah, you know, cause go use it as a sword. Oh yeah. Oh man. My my affectionate name for him is the little asshole. Because <laughs> that's how he acts. This dude goes in the garage, gets whatever tool he needs, and it stays wherever he finishes playing with it. There you go. You'll and, find it later with a mower. What are you yeah. worried about? Well, Sheena keeps the grass short enough to where we find it, but it's usually wet from the rain when we do find it. Um, no, I, I love him, and it, it's a, it's. It, I do. I mess with him when I talk to people. I say he's my little a hole because he's just like I was when I was his age. <laughs> he wants to be stuck in our pocket. He wants to be doing what we're doing. He gets an idea. He goes get it. He got his own shovel, his own rake, his own hoe. And you go outside, and this dude's just digging holes. What you doing? I'm looking for treasure. I drew a treasure map. He draws the treasure map and says, this is where my treasure map says that the stuff's at. So they got holes. There you go. That's awesome stuff. Yeah. So, Lewis, what, what you, you got coming up next, man? I got potatoes in the ground already. Um, and then uh, I got... Uh, um, I got some manure, a trailer load, I think three or four square yards worth of horse manure with some straw and hay in it. And I threw it in some of my, a lot of my gardens. I'm getting another load for sure to put in, uh, another garden. Um, and then I got to turn it all over by hand, uh, with a spade shovel. And then, um, I, uh, keep throwing my kitchen scraps into the gardens right now just to give it a little more nutrients. And then uh, about uh, 
May 2-4 weekend up here in Canada is about the prime time uh, to start planting. Um, that's our, where and whenever, because it's the long week, May 2-4 weekend, right? The long weekend. So that's when everybody's home planting everything, right? And uh, usually where I live in Ontario here, it, it, uh, we're guaranteed that there's going to be no more frosts. Um, so that's when everybody does it. And then, uh, so two weeks before that, I put in my, uh, um, my bow homemade bone meal, my, uh, banana, like, uh, the banana peels that I baked and ground up and the eggshells I baked and ground up. Um, and it, I don't know if I said the, the eggshells too, um, yeah. some Epsom salts, uh, a little bit of miracle grow in there. Um, and then two weeks before I start planting, cause that stuff, it takes about two weeks before it starts to, uh, um, take effect. Um, right. right to start becoming then, uh, usable to the plants. Make, yeah. 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 Um, and then, uh, I will be getting a, a load of triple mix this month as well too getting it all into the gardens and then uh, May 2 four I go hog wild um, with everything that I've got now some of the stuff I got in my green room are gonna right. be staying I want, in I wanted in to ask you how uh, your ginger and stuff doing oh one of them I gotta measure it one's over a foot tall um, <laughs> And another one, yeah, like like from like half an inch right to over a foot tall. Um, the turmeric, I I uh, I harvested it, it, and then I got like ten. Uh, I had six of them, and then uh, I got ten because some of them had the double and triple sprouting, right. and uh, so I took the shoots. And a little tiny piece of uh, turmeric out of there with some of the roots and uh, replanted them. Um, and then uh, I got, so I got 10. So, so I'm going to leave all my turmeric and ginger in the five gallon pails and the six inch containers and the flower pots. I got them in, um, but my tomato plants, my pepper plants, um and something else i got growing um will be uh put into uh the gardens and then right. i everything else that i got going on um i i put them the seeds into the ground and if i need to um separate them a little further i will the the carrots i I usually sprinkle them in there a little too much, right? Like too right. close together. But so I, 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 I have to always uh, spread them out a little bit. Um, so, yeah, there's a, so I pretty much do everything else. Uh, buy seed outside. It's just my tomato plants and my pepper plants that uh, I got to really uh, do before um like starting in late february early march i start inside start um, seeds. yeah yeah start from seeds and then uh the potato plants like i said that you can start them in early spring um now like uh this time of the year or a bit earlier um the garlic ice have to start in november right so it gets that cold snap um, for a bit so it's like i think it separates or something like that and uh i start everything from seeds and some years i get a little bit better of uh like the carrots or or uh the onions they get a little bit bigger some years and some years they're a little bit smaller right but uh i'm still building up my soil a, a lot because uh from the original ground, um, it's like about a foot down before it hits gravel. So um, I'm still building everything up. Right. So quite a bit, right? So that's all I'm doing right now, trying to figure out what's wrong with my raised beds. I know the soil's not great, but 
as, yeah. as far as using that dosatron pump and giving them fertilizer every time I water. To me, I should yeah. have a little bit better. I, I should have a lot better return than what I have right now. The cucumbers have been popped for three weeks and they're still two inches tall. Um, yeah. So it, it's, it, it's really, it's frustrating to say the least. Um, Q, John's always trying to cheat his way out of doing something, especially karaoke. He, he can't compete with me in karaoke. And I, we're going to get back to talking about that in a minute, Lewis. But John's been pushing some buttons. He can't compete. He just can't. So he, he just wants to sit there and poke me and poke me and poke me until, you know, I, I get mad, I, I make a video, and then he, he suspends me. And then he got the marshmallow, Mr. Robert. John's the marshal. Mr. Robert's the marshmallow. He, John's understudy. He, he even got Mr. Robert suspending me and, and making and punishing me and stuff now. That don't make no sense. Okay, I'm Root done. Because I don't, I don't want to get some pounds deducted. Root sniffing. For root sniffing. I, I ain't going to have no dang root sniffer and, and uh, cheater. Um, you know, getting, me, getting my team penalized 25 pounds. It's not going to happen. I'm ashamed of you, Danny. He's supposed to be. Uh, he's supposed to be acting a little bit better by now. As as long as John has been working with you to reform you a little bit, and uh, you're still causing the man trouble. You know, causing our team trouble. Now, Homestead Aquarius, I hope okay. you don't mind. Uh, there's one particular wild uh, thing up here <clears throat> in Canada. I don't know um, if it grows anywhere else, but it's dandelions. Um, you can use the roots for coffee and stuff like that. But I won't be oh, actually yeah. like holding it. Up. Yeah, like I won't be holding it up to my nose and sniffing it. Why not? Yeah. No. Root sniffing's amazing. It, it no. gets, gets excited. It's like, look. Mm, now I'm ready to go work in the garden. See, see, that's that's what it looks like. That's the face of a root sniffer here. He might as well be on John's team. Boy, you better stop. Me and you's not gonna be we almost partnered, Mr. Robert. He's gonna have to take to be on step. John's team. I'm not gonna oh. be on John's team. I'm never gonna be on John's team. Couldn't handle that. I got to be on the winning team. I don't know what we're going to do with the food sniffing. What, what are you going to do with your uh, community service project? Um, same thing it out. It, yeah, I did. It's going to be the same thing that I'm doing for my um, uh, my junior, Shed Wars Junior. Um, the video I put out – oh, Lewis must have lost service – the, the video I put out with the Oasis cubes wasn't supposed to go out. Uh, oh. That was that I was supposed to. I didn't even label it correctly. It's that was supposed to be the uh, for Maggie with the uh, Shed Wars Junior because I'm so far different in the growing zones. Um, I, I sent her a five gallon bucket and we're going to do a, a cracky grow together. Um, I sent her the bucket and everything she needs. Short, I forgot to put the seeds in. But everything short of the seed she needs for us to be able to grow um, lettuce or any type of leafy vegetable, we're going to be doing that. So since I'm already doing that, I just figured I'd count that as my community service also. Really? Yep. Well, I was picturing something that you would make out of water bottles and aquariums and all kinds of stuff like that. I can't. I can't make it out of water. Well, J Jeff and I is actually talking about doing another one. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay, that's um, fine. As long as y'all working as a partnership, we. I know you're. I don't know which one of y'all is more addled by the root sniffing, but you know maybe the two of y'all together can come up with something. That's that's my first time sniffing roots, and I'll tell you what, it's pretty amazing. The peer pressure not to do it pushed me into doing it. Hmm. I've never sniffed roots before, but it's 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 amazing. It's amazing. It's better than Red Bull. <laughs> Just um, say no. John no. saying if I don't complete the soft penalty that Robert gave me, that he's I'm gonna have to go and face him. Bring it on, brother. Bring it on. 
soft. You don't want to. If, if they do it right, it shouldn't be soft at all because they should be helping a bunch of people and keeping them busy. <laughs> Eric says his luck, he'd sniff the roots and get a, uh, some kind of fungus or bacteria in his nose. It'd be better than fungus gnats. See, that's a side effect. And uh, another side effect is memory getting all messed up. You release videos that you're not supposed to. That's a side effect of root sniffing right there. I, I don't think so, because like I said, this is the first time I've ever sniffed roots. And it's pretty amazing. My memory, I'm like, I could read a book now and remember the whole thing. We got kids watching, Danny. Who? Or, or they will be. Unless oh. you make this private, you know, you don't know that there's not kids watching right now. You said they're root sniffing. So if the kids you know. sniff roots, they're going to learn. The pepper roots smell different than cucumber roots and zucchini roots, and everything has its own unique smell. They'll smell similar, but you're going to learn before long that the, the, the rights that you'll be able to learn, your nose is going to tell you not only what type of plant that is that you're growing from the seed but how good it's going to taste whenever you get it. <laughs> Let me ask you something else. Why you start, This is supposed to be about greenhouses, not, yes, not sir. sniffing. When you tie your strings, because I was looking at these things, I like to I like to get inventive too, and I see stuff, and it's like, huh, what are they doing there? But your buckets, you're growing them in buckets. What? Are the bales still on there? What do you tie the string to? Because I was thinking if you could use the bale, you take the bale and stick it up in the air and tie your strings to that. Boom, instant hold there. I actually, I don't tie it to anything. I use, it's called a, a tomato clip. Um, I don't have any inside right now. But basically, it kind of looks like a little Pac-Man. It opens up and there's a little clip on the end. When you close it, it seats itself in and locks. On the back side of it, the uh, your string, let's see, your string oh, passes, okay. and when you close it on the back side, it actually crimps to the string, and then it locks on the front, and it lets the tomato move around a little bit in it. It gives it some wiggle room. I tried tying it before to the bale on it, and you still end up having the string going across and trying to go up, and it actually ended up causing more issues than just hooking it up to the – just putting – on the and that's that's part of the video I was going to be doing coming up shortly after I did the uh, I wanted to do a pruning video and um, a more in depth look on how I you know clip and as I move up um, on the lower part the first time I uh, I put the clips on I used two two tomato clips on the bottom for each string that runs up I found that in the past using one. Uh, the sun at, by the end of the season, that one gets a lot of wiggling, and they they, they will they sometimes they end up breaking. Um, so what I do is I always try to use I always use two on the bottom, on the, for the first uh, the first time I clip the string, I put two on the bottom, try to put them a couple inches apart. Um, you want to put it under a leaf, not under the flower truss, because when it wiggles around, you actually pull it, it'll move up and down and tend to knock some of the flowers off. So you want to put it under one of the leaf branches, not the flower truss. And um, as it goes up, I have a taping machine also. Also, It's called a Tapner taping machine. It's made in the U.S. There's also different versions that you could buy that's a lot cheaper. They, they all have their issues short of the Tapner. Um, so once it gets to a certain point, I'll actually put – back up the two clips i put on the bottom i always use new clips on the bottom as i go up in between about every six inches i'll put uh, i'll use the taping machine for about a foot well basically it's like you'll have a clip then you have six inches i'll use the taping machine then at the end of the week i'll put another clip usually you do it every three to four days you know you go outside and spend a few minutes adding clips or taping um the uh -huh. When I'm putting the newer clip, I'm sorry, once I get a little bit higher up, I try to add in clips from the year before because they're not really, um, they're not UV protected, the clips. So if you get two seasons off of it, you're very lucky. Huh. 
Huh, Angie, you growing some some to, uh, cucumber tasting tomatoes? Tomatoes don't have cucumber smells, and this is amazing. <laughs> Take care, Q. Yeah, the, uh, there's some really bad weather passing in through the uh, string through the um, the mid sections. Um, yeah, even up here in Canada, Manitoba is supposed to get a real bad snowstorm, like decades bad snowstorm. Dang. Anywhere from thirty to eighty centimeters worth of snow. Really? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we Got some, uh, we got some accents going on here. We got a Cajun, a Canadian, a hillbilly. You know, if we just had a, a, a Portuguese Yankee in here, that that would uh, that would round out the plate right there, just about. So, got somebody watching that's not talking. That's if you can see, it's kind of the the black clip. That's the tomato clip. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They uh, they seem to get cheaper every year. Thanks, Phil, for sending that. Um, they seem to get a little cheaper every year and a little less um, useful. Um, you got a lurker out there, huh? Real quiet lurker. Well, honestly, well, Phil used to Phil Phil's from up the road. Uh, he used to be on. He used to come in on all the live streams and everything. And it seemed like every time he'd come in, as soon as he'd come in, the trolls would start pow, pow, pow. So, he, I mean, he's welcome. It's fun when the trolls come in, but he's at work too right now. <laughs> um, yeah, Phil's you know a Grow Pro you know, Network or Grow Pro Phone. I'm sorry. You know what might be a good idea for those clips? We have them up here in Canada. They're called O rings. Um, for like when you want to put something in a hose and you want to make it uh, the the hose tighter, it's just it, it's a screw thing on and it makes the the ring tighter, um, and it's all metal. I'd have to see that. Okay, does... I'll go. I'll be right back. I'll go and grab one. Okay, uh, that, I mean this does work well. In the picture, Phil's actually using some. Uh... Baling twine, which is a little bit, they, they got the baling twine like you used to bale the hay, but what they use is they sell with the tomahawks, it's actually tomato twine. Um, it will last for a couple of years. I don't take the chance with it. Um, with what I produced last year, the weight we had on them, whenever I cut the tomatoes out, I just went and cut at the top and started over with fresh string on it this year because I don't want to come back and the string broke from it being worn down. It's... I bought a 10,000 foot roll of it. I think it was $13 for the, the tomato twine and it's a plastic. I mean, it's not great for the environment, but you can use it year after year. Yeah. See how it's, uh, oh, it's, it's a, a circle there. Yep. And, and then, uh, yeah. And then it's got that screwed thing, right? So it, it gets, right. it's bigger or smaller, right? The, 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 only issue, the only issue with trying to use that on the tomatoes is it, it would be rough on the, the base of the plants and you'd have to be able to connect it somehow to the string to where it's not sliding up and down the plant or up and down the string. What that tomato clip does is it actually on the backside, it bites the string and holds it and the, uh, it does let the plant move around. By the end of the season, the lower ones are almost going to be broken. The base of the plant is going to be so big that it... Um, it actually, a couple of them actually snapped the tomato clips last year because the plant gets so big. But by that point, you have a lot more in the top hole of them. Uh, but yeah, I used, I, we call them hose clamps down here. I use them for all kinds of things. Uh, I just don't think it would work good for the uh, my tomatoes, not like we using them. Okay, well, you, you, I just thought it might because you can right. make them bigger or smaller and you can tie the string to it. Maybe they could have been some of some use, right? Right. It's, it's, uh, dude, I'm always open for ideas. I just don't think that would that would work. 
after you tie the first one on it, you know, once it's tied on the bottom, you have to be able to tie it to the next one as you move up because those tomato plants will be anywhere from 12 to 20 feet long by the end of the season. You know, you can't untie one. And you, you understand what I'm saying? trying to say? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. When your yeah. bottom one's tied, you'd have to untie the bottom one to be able to tie the upper ones, I guess. Um, I don't know. It's And, I mean, they're really cheap. It's uh, The tomato clips was, I think it was $30 for a 1,000 of them. With the shipping from Amazon, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, I love I love ideas visiting with people. That's how I ended up with most of what I have in the new greenhouses is talking and visiting. the uh, The new greenhouses was it, it, it's over. It should have been done a year ago. Easy. I ended up working. Um, hey, Miss Gale, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I ended up working six months straight at work and I didn't have time to put them together, but I ended up coming up with a lot of great ideas and making things a lot better with my, uh, with the greenhouses. It, it, it did. It worked out really well for what I was trying to do. Oh, Hey Kenny, John's going to be all man crush mode. mode. Hey, you're having trouble with your outside beds. Um, I forget what all you put in those beds to get them going. It's called a soil builder. Last year, all I did was put the soil builder in it for the uh, spring. What uh, was in there before? I mean, nothing. the soil builder, is that like a, a liquid or something? Or no, is it like the soil builder is actually uh, pine fines and sand, based, mostly. Um, it's about 60% pine fines. Um 20% uh, sand and 20% composted rice hull. But I didn't oh. see any rice hull in it. Now, see, that's that's really weird because I was watching something uh, something about pine, using pine for um, amending soil. And they say don't do it. Exactly. Um, it was Danny <laughs> at uh, Deep South Permaco Deep, uh, Deep South Deep Homestead. South Homestead. Yeah, he was saying, uh, talking about adding uh, wood ash, you know, to your soil. Right. He said, uh, so don't ever use pine. Uh, anything rosinous like that is not good to go into uh, your soil. Um, I, that could have something to do with it. I don't and know. Yeah, I think you're uh, on with something there, uh, and Danny, too, because I got pine trees and spruce trees, right? And they're all in a tamarack tree that loses its needles every year, right, and comes back. And uh, I have to put wood ashes in it um, every year. And the wood ashes, um, what they, the ashes do helps take away the acidiness in the soil. So, um, and that's why I'm always put adding the, the triple mix, the manure, um, and all that stuff. Right. Um, right. cause there's certain things out there that is acidy, um, that will lower the pH in your soil. And then you got to build that back up. So, you know, aside from the gravel being so close to the, the, the ground, uh, level the grass level right um it's that acid and it's that uh like lemon trees if i could have lemon trees outside you know year round they do great you know <laughs> but because of the pine trees and the spruce trees i got here you know it's i gotta always add to that ph level get it up right right and i think that's what it is i really think it's an issue with the ph that i'm having because um, injecting the fertilizer basically at the roots should, I should have a really good turnout with it. Um, I spoke to the guy after I realized what it was when I went to pick it up. Uh, I had done picked up two loads and put it out. So eight yards was already put in there and I talked to him. He's like, it should work. You know, a salesman, it should work. If it doesn't, you do hydroponics. If you, direct inject the fertilizer to it 
you could, uh, you know, it should really work almost like a flood to drain. So that's what I've been trying to do with the very, the pump's not cheap. That uh, Dosatron pump is not cheap. It's amazing, but it's not cheap. And uh, I, I really haven't seen any, any effects of it helping by putting the fertilizer in it. I did order a, a 20 yard load of dirt, topsoil. I'm going to add some of it to the raised beds. Um, I'm actually going to take one of the three, the, the beds are three foot wide by either 22 or 25. I'm going to take one of the three by 25 beds, pull everything out of it and take a whole bunch of, pull all the plants out of it and put, well, take about half of the, um, the mix out and put the topsoil in it, try to mix it in real good and, and replant, see if that helps to where I have a better idea. I'll also be taking it and just top dressing the, the dirt, the soil with topsoil. And um, if works, uh, another thing uh, I, I've learned in the last couple of years, um, when it comes to at least the soil, I don't. Thanks for stopping by my granny's garden. Have a great day. Yeah, I don't know too much about hydroponics, but uh, what I do know about um, at least with the soil, right? Right. It's the microorganisms in the soil that uh, that help big time. Um, it's yeah. not just about the worms and, and all that stuff. That yeah, it's it's um, having wood in there as well, right? Because it's got the, it will feed off of that wood to right. put the microorganisms, uh, this, that, and the other, right? So it, uh, it's everything, right? Right. John did say that lime takes away the acidity. I will be adding lime, John. I, I, I didn't mean, I didn't intentionally skip you because I'm not happy with you right now. Um, we were just visiting. <laughs> Since you don't want to come up and visit because you're scared. Uh, yeah, Lewis, you, you're exactly right. And I think the issue with the pH is the microorganisms aren't able to, uh, when the pH isn't right, the microorganisms don't multiply like they should. So it ends up causing issues, you know, just step by step. It's a step by step process that it's all leading back to I got some crap. <laughs> I got some crap. Uh, Organic matter really helped all kinds of uh, real good broken down wood, rotted, well, rotted wood. I know. think I have access. It's going to be a while now because of all the rain we've got yesterday and we're looking at tonight. But I have a, my cousin that has his uh, cows has the, um, at the end of the, the winter, because he feeds his, his cows hay all winter, and then he just piles it up, and then at the end of the winter, he pushes all the piles together, and it breaks down. You have a 30-foot pile, then by the end of the summertime, it'll be a foot or two tall, and he spreads it out. But uh, he said I could pick up some of that from him if if I wanted. So I think I'm going to go pick up a, a, enough to fill up one bed with, or maybe two beds, and add some of that when I put the topsoil in also, at least in the middle of the beds. I can remove some of the, the the stuff out the middle of the beds without disturbing the plants too much because the plants are tiny. <laughs> so if uh, by removing it out the middle, I can add some dirt and some of that compost to it. And drop, it, drop, it, it might stuff, drop some branches or some logs in there too while you're at it. I don't I don't have access to anything with like that around here besides it's all trash trees. Um oh. The uh, in, anything that could burn in a fireplace is it's they sell it because there's not a whole bunch of trees and stuff around here that people normally cut down. That's worth the crap. If if they cut stuff down, it's usually pine trees, the big oak trees, and you know the nice trees. Well, oak trees is about the only thing nice um, that we have. Oak trees and pecan trees, and it's hard to find a pecan tree or an oak tree that somebody wants to cut down or that they trim. They will all burn it. Uh, because I had thought about putting wood when, before I was filling them to help reduce some of the soil that I needed to purchase, and I just wasn't able to get any. Does your cousin raise it, uh, grow his own hay? He grows his own hay. He doesn't put any type of uh, poisons in it. He fertilizes it with nitrogen twice a year, um, once between each one. 
you know, between each cut, and we get two cuttings over here. So he fertilizes. Um, after he does the cut and picks up the hay, he, he puts out nitrogen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, even yeah, farmers up here do that when they cut down their hay, and every time they – some farmers up here do grass silage, and after mm -hmm. every cut on the grass silage too, um, they can get three or four cuts on that easily, and they're out there spreading the manure. Well, they could normally get three cuttings easy out here, but because of the rain issues that we have, they they normally they won't do it. They they don't want to take the chance because once they cut it, it they still got to pick it up if it rains on it, and then it, they can't do anything with it. Yeah, I know the hay's got to be like they got to sit out there for two or three days, and they got to turn it over as it's drying out. Well, over here. What they do, and John's in the back. He's been out. He's in. He's been in the back for about five minutes. I'm just gonna punish him for another minute or two before I bring him up. <laughs> uh, but uh, what they do around here is they actually cut it. They let it set out for a day. Then they sweep it closer together, and then they'll go and and um, bale the hay the next day with the hay baler. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's pretty I, I, much I, what they do here. Yeah, I know what you were getting at, Mr. Robert. Dave, uh, if he uses the poisons, he's actually, yeah. I, I want to say he's 100% organic, but he's not certified. All he feeds his, uh, his cows are grass. You know, they're grass-fed beef. He doesn't put antibiotics to them. He doesn't do any of that with them. Um, so they're, they're, I don't have to worry about any of that. If he does, if he has a cow that's sick, he separates it. Um, puts it in the pen and it stays there until it gets better or it dies. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't, uh, it sounds harsh, but it's actually better meat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They yeah. sick, but it's healthy meat. Correct. People don't, uh, <laughs> pe people don't like hearing that. Oh, well he puts it in a pen and lets it die. Well, you, you're going to, some people's going to complain because they die. Some people's going to complain because he gave them antibiotics or something to help keep them alive. So, but that's, yeah, it, it we've used it before. We put a couple loads in the uh, in the big garden we had out at the property, the half acre garden, and it, it really did amazing. It really helped. Hi, Danny. Hi, John. How's it going? Doing all right. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Robert. Hey, John. Hey, John. I got the Marshall and the marshmallow up on at the same time. How you been? <clears throat> Who are you speaking to? There's three other people. I'm talking to you. Well, you need to speak up. Can you hear me? It, it's low. It really is low. How about now? That's better. Okay. I've never... I rarely get told by somebody that they can't hear me. Now you got a... Okay, the hum's going. Huh? It had a hum for a second, John. Oh, yeah. Must be the bee. I'm a bee head. you a bee head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not often that you're nervous to be talking on on a live stream either. That's why people don't say that they can't hear you. We understand that you're nervous. I'm never nervous. You're nervous. You're worried about what I'm going to say, brother. <laughs> well, he's nervous because you live on the bayou and you wrestle alligators for a living. For fun. For fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lewis. I'm really, really scared of that. <laughs> the uh. Danny's hey, first hey, girlfriend Lewis. was hey, an alligator. Lewis. That's how he got started alligator wrestling. Hey, Lewis, <laughs> great white sharks went by me. So, I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't go swimming in the, the shark's backyard. <laughs> Lewis probably won't be there. Bear 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 bear. Bear. Unfortunately, I have no choice but to play with the great white sharks from time to time. Hey, I was going to shoot you a text message, but uh, I'm, I'm going to shoot you one later on after we're done with this. My stepdad wants to uh, get with you on some more of them oysters. Okay. He, he was impressed with them, so we're going to uh, – I'll get with you on right. the side. Right now they're, uh, they're just starting to feed again, and it's one of the best times to eat them is like from now till June. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what he said when I said, hey, I got some oysters. Because I didn't offer them to him until I tasted them. Because I knew if they wasn't good, he wouldn't have been happy. So after I ate a dozen of them, I like, I got to share these with Pop. I, I was really impressed with how good they were. And um, 
He's right. like, man, man, where you got these at, big boy? <laughs> like one of my friends from New York sent me to sent him to us. New York. Them oysters from over there taste like. <laughs> I'm like, look, take them home, bust a couple of them open and eat them. If you don't like them, I'll, I'll take them back. I, you know, they're amazing. And so he's like, I'm only going to eat five or six. Okay. Uh -huh. I call him the next day. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go pick up the rest of them oysters. There ain't nothing left. I'm like, what you mean? Man, them things were good, big boy. I, I eat them all. Very fresh. Yeah, they were very. You, well, you get a, that. You get an 80-year-old Cajun saying that he, he's happy with that? You did something, John. Well, I got a 50-year-old Cajun saying that he liked it. So. I'm not 50 yet. And you're 48. Not yet. 47. Yep. I'll be 48 in November. Yes. That is uh, testimony right there. There when 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 two Cajun men sit there and say that that oyster is better than what they got right there. That they like that they like Cape Cod, Massachusetts oysters, not New York oysters. Well, I, I say New York. It's all the same. You're north of I-10. No, 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 no. It's You're not north the same. of I-10, John. No, no, no. It's not the same. New York and Cape Cod and Massachusetts, totally different world. Same thing. No. Nope. Uh, no, we, we've actually, the oysters we get around here has been, they're good, but they're not salty like that because of the uh, fresh water we get from you have the Mississippi water. River. Yeah, you have brackish water. Yeah, we have a brackish water. Whenever we, when there's a, uh, a light winter and there's not a lot of snow up north, the water, the, um, it, it's a lot more salty and the, uh, the oysters are a lot more salty. But the last few years we've been having, you know, they've been having to release water from the Mississippi into different flood zones to divert it to prevent flooding around New Orleans and everything. And it really um, it, it gives the oysters. It's not a bad flavor. They're just not a salty flavor with them. You know, in fact, well, like yeah, I said, a lot of you guys grown down there is more in like standstill type of, you know, harbors or, you know. No, actually, it's it. Um, the oyster, most of the oysters are, they're starting to plant them out like y'all do. Um, they're in bays and th there's a lot of movement in the water, but it's all from the tides. Um, they're probably the same thing like you do there, but it's just the, the water's a lot more dirty because we don't have a sand bottom. We have a dirt, a mud bottom because of right. all the soil erosion right. coming through the Mississippi and everything. And that has a lot to do with, with the flavor you know, the and flavor. everything. Yeah. flavor of it where you know my farms are you know within a mile of the actual atlantic atlantic ocean well i've seen the pictures on, on some of your videos the water over there where y'all you, you're growing your oysters are beautiful yeah you know it's, we we might get two weeks a year of the water looking like that where, where we're at because it, it just doesn't work uh bushgrass family how you doing brother pass them aquati thanks for stopping by all of y'all thank you um hey charles be looking in your mailbox there's something coming for you charles is it bad no i think he'll, i think he'll like it a fish head wrapped up in a newspaper what is that that sounds scary john no i think he'll like it uh, he'll, he'll at least i think he'll enjoy the acknowledgement okay the center did buy you and robert each a new vi uh gift um, oh, we're waiting for it to come in so we can send it to y'all. Oh, that's cool. Don't, don't get it okay. Hey, I just realized something about uh, those oysters you got, Danny. You talked to me about talking to us about how it, um, the flooding issues. Um, I guess you could say now you know what north of I-10 tastes like, right? Unfortunately. So, because that's where all that water's coming from. Exactly. Exactly. The uh, <laughs> and, you know, there's a big difference in the flavor of the oysters closer to New Orleans than there is over here. Uh, but the flooding issues in New Orleans cause them to open diverting weirs or um, oh sh dams. You know, they'll open it up and put it in the Chafalaya Basin and different, it, it benefits the basin. It doesn't benefit the, the Gulf or the, the Vermilion Bay and the fishing areas because it really dilutes the amount of salinity we have in the water. Um, it, but, you know, it's either 
hurt a small section of the coast of Louisiana as far as the fishing and the oysters and stuff like that, or flood thousands of people out around New Orleans. That's the that's basically what they tell us. You know, to me, if you you build your house in a bowl and you're worried about you, you, it's your fault. But yeah, this isn't this isn't a, to get on that. Oh well, yeah, it's like you know, New Orleans get gets built in a swamp. What do you think is gonna happen? New Orleans is New Orleans is like 17 feet below sea level or something. They just keep building the levees up around it to help it prevent from, you know, the the pumps. That, that's the reason it flooded for Katrina. The pumps wasn't working. You know, when the levee broke, the amount of water initially could have been pumped out if all the pumps were working, and it have prevented a lot of the flooding. But yeah, but that's still right. But you know, but as smart as humans are, I mean, Mother Nature. You can't stop, especially water. That's the strongest right. force on the face of the planet. Water wants to find ground level. It wants to be level. And it will do whatever it takes to find that eventually at some point. Well, with all the marshes and the erosion from the, the hurricanes over the years and the erosion from the past few years, the last couple of hurricanes, they're actually, we're not getting the flooding initially when the hurricane hits. What, what's happening with us in this area is the hurricane passes, the eye passes, you know, and it starts dumping rain above us, north of us, 20, 40, 60 miles, and then the water starts draining back. And then when that happens, you get the backside. If we're on the east side of the hurricane, you have that tail that comes back around, and it's actually pushing the water up. And that's where we're getting our flooding from. The water rises, and we have the water coming from the north back down to us, and it just it has nowhere to go. That's where our flooding issues have been coming from the last 10 years. The boss yeah. going to let you play John, or are you going to have to leave? No, she's informing me that my dog Bella has a uh, uh, she's an issue in, in her behind. Yeah, she had it a couple of years ago, and she, so we got to take it to the vet. She gets like a rash in her, like behind by her butt. Yeah. And uh, so, and she starts losing all of it here in that certain spot. So we got to go get her some antibiotics. I got you. Yeah. yeah there goes uh, another, another eight hundred bucks. <laughs> the, next, the next town over from me uh, has the. Uh, we get it in a little bit where I live, but it's called the Grand River, and in Grand Valley, the next town over to me, uh, make. There's a part, a section of the town. Every every spring, it's bound to rise up so high and come on and flood the road right across the street every year. Um, in the Grand Valley on the main road, uh, a couple of years ago, and and uh, it'll come up to the point that some bridges along the Grand River. The water will come up, and it took a car right off the bridge. A oh, lady yeah. got up, was lucky to get out, had her kid in the in her arms, and it took the kid away. Like she lost, oh, her, lost the grip of her kid, right? And it, but it took the kid. Uh, uh, the kid passed away, um, but it was in the next couple of towns over, um, and it took the car, but. 10 kilometers before a tree stopped it. It was like, holy crow, that was a first. Yeah. yeah. Flooding's nothing to play with. You never know when the roads are covered, you never know where you're at. And it's a mess. It, it comes up fast over here, really fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like we don't get any hurricanes or anything like that. But it, it from the ice melting and breaking up and or going in and around the bends, right? Right. It's uh, it, ice clogged, right? Um, and it just floods everything behind. Right. John, King, you have a question. King Fuba, that is a 48 by 48, 4 by 4. Six foot tall? Uh, yes. Yeah, 4 by 4 by 6 foot tall. Really good, good. On Amazon, uh, 79 bucks. Can't beat it. Not be slowing down a little bit. Hold on, but uh, this river, like for it to get up and across up on the roads, 
and the sweep of car away, you're talking about 40 feet, 45 feet easily up wow. from where it's normally at. Yeah. Robert, what's the title of this video? Greenhouse. Oh, okay. Yeah, Danny thinks it's about root snipping. I'm going to have to wind up doing something else with the boy. He just don't seem to learn. Community with service wasn't bad enough. Robert, with the what? That's right. Robert, with the boy. About, Robert, it's about the time boy. that I'm starting to get to you, too. Wait, I'm starting to change you as well, sir. There you go. Nail it to him. I don't have an issue with you nailing it to him. I'm going to have to do something. What are you talking, John? The, the time, I've Ryan noticed something pitch. about you lately. Nail it you, to him. Every time you get on a, on a live stream, you come in unzipped, blinding everybody. Man's always coming in unzipped. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm, I'm like going blind. Scared to discipline me, too. He keeps pushing it off on you. Because I'm trying to teach him how to be more strict. He's the marshmallow. You're the marshal. But as far as the greenhouse stuff, John, what, do you have any questions? I mean, we went through a whole bunch of it earlier. No, mm -hmm. I heard. I understand. You, you know, your hook set up. Uh, that's pretty awesome. That's, you know, you do it like most people do well, it, with that hanging string. Yeah, you know? the the uh, there's a lot of people, and I, I didn't make up any portion of that. You know, yeah. that's all stuff I've learned from other people. I've seen that. I've I've seen that many many different people. The uh, the only difference I do is a lot of people will take it if if they don't have an injection system, they will take their um, they'll have their tanks in the ground. It's a lot more to me. It's a lot more um, hands on because they'll mix their fertilizer in the ground every day. Um, if they have half a tank, they'll fill it back up. They'll readjust the pH and, and everything with it and adjust the, uh, the PPMs in it. And then they'll have a top off tank of fresh water on the side. And you now, know, as it pumps, it puts fresh water back in. I don't do chlorinated that. water. It, it is unchlorinated water. Unchlorinated. Some, I use unchlorinated water. Some people use chlorinated water. Um, people, you know, people use what they have. I'm lucky enough to where I don't have to, with the water from the property, it works out perfect. Um, I add my fertilizer to it, and the fertilizer comes in. It, it says the pH right up around 5.9 every time, right, right in the sweet spot where it needs to be. So I, I don't have to worry about What's adding. What's the NPK on your fertilizer? It, I try to get it. Um, it, it depends because I use it's a three part. It's a master blend. Um, I don't. Re, I, I could. Just, I could send you the um, the breakdown of each of them. But basically, no, 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 I don't, just don't tell me it has Roundup in it. That's all. <laughs> it's close. It's close. If you put too much, it'll burn it like Roundup. Um, but it, it's a master blend formula. I think it's a. Um, I, I don't even want to lie to you right now. I can't remember, but you use the master blend formula for one part. It's a, a, a half tablespoon, half teaspoon of master blend, a half teaspoon of calcium nitrate, and a quarter teaspoon of Epsom salt or magnesium yeah. sulfate. And yeah. you mix that with one gallon to get you 800 ppms of uh, fertilizer mixture. So uh, that all around somewhere like a, like a, like a five, ten, fourteen. No, it, it's probably it's higher than that. Hold on, uh, Angie. If we had to, we could use the uh, the water from the bayou, but it, it's it, it's a drain off from fields and everything around here. Um, I would rather use the uh, rain gutters or rain rain water, uh, you know, because I know more about what I would have in there. Look, there you go, Phil. Uh, John, Phil just said the uh, master blend is a four. 1838. Phil, you my secretary, boy. You got it. You on track today. Um, yeah, well, it was up here in Canada, the the farmers, they got their fields tiled um, so they can get into their fields a little more easier, easier and earlier uh, this time of the year. Um, so whatever they put into their, their fields goes right to the ditch or a particular man-made ditch that runs up to to a stream that runs up to whatever waterway that uh, goes, right. So and whatever that's... they're putting, in, whatever they're putting in their fields, whether it be Roundup, uh, some sort of growing agent, whatever it is, guess where it's going. 
Yeah. And, and it, it, that, that's the same thing around here. We are slap full of sugarcane fields around here and the sugarcane fields, they spray with, with poisons and, and roundup and everything to keep the grass down to where the sugarcane grows well. So that all goes into there. Um, you know, we don't, we catch the fish. We, we've never cooked any of the fish from the bayou. It's just fun letting Colt catch them. So that's, uh, you know, if we had to, you know, in a, if I'm in a bind and I got to eat something, I'll have no issues taking the fish out of the bayou and eating it because it can't be that much different here than it is 15 miles up the road into the Gulf of Mexico. Everything drains that way. Uh, so, but, okay. yeah, you you seen that, John? Um, yeah. That's the master blend, 418, 38. Ooh, that's high. Low, low nitrogen, but, yeah. But it's you high. also you add the calcium nitrate to it also. So you actually, you're going to put the same amount of calcium nitrate, a half a teaspoon of calcium nitrate as you do the half a teaspoon of the master blend. So it brings it up pretty high. And then you add a quarter, a teaspoon of uh, Epsom salt. Yeah, that's but pretty close to my summertime tomato fertilizer blend. that I use out in the garden. Yeah. 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 And, what I'm and, using, though, indoors, I want to, well, if I you give me the chance here. The, uh, this stuff, I actually got this is from Grow Something with Jet. With Jet. And I've been using this this winter, my first time on the uh, fertilizing every two weeks. The plants look absolutely amazing. This stuff right here. Was that 10, 5, 14? Yep. yep. This stuff is absolutely amazing. And this is not hydroponics. I, I mix... Uh, I mix two teaspoons, one gallon of water, and every two weeks I give them a nice drink of this. Yeah, this stuff is unbelievable, unbelievable. If you mix it two teaspoons to one gallon of water, you off, your, your your nitrogen will be a little bit higher than the master blend, but you're pretty close on everything else. Well, I'm, I'm doing the instructions for because it says I can use this either hydroponically right. or if there's a different mixture for soil. Your soil, you put a little bit more in it than you would for the hydroponics. Right. Correct. But That's I'm just saying, as opposed to using that, your the master blend is is almost the same when you yeah. if you use it two tablespoons of that for the uh for the master blend. No, not you know, tablespoons, teaspoons. Oh, you said tablespoons. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah. two teaspoons for gotcha. one gallon of water. Okay. And I mean this stuff, the plants just they just they oh, yeah. green, green. They absolutely love it. What's that? The the last number is the potash? Yeah. Um, potassium, yeah. Potassium. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, your potassium, the plants love that for the roots and the initial growth yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. The phosphorus doesn't have much. It's only five. So that's still a good bit. That it that helps. Yeah. Hey there, yeah. Coastal Gardens. What's up, brother? Another man with a cool accent. Why who else do you know has a cool one? Was that who else has a cool one? You oh, uh, uh, Lewis and Mr. Robert, myself, Robert, yeah, it does have a, an accent, yeah. The um, I plan on coming out here for half for an hour, and it's like Jeff told me it wasn't gonna be no hour, it's gonna be way longer than that. Um, but yeah, well, John, yeah you, you got a lot of people that do like it, you know. Uh, but, I, it's surprising. I'll say that it's surprising to have 18 people in here right now at this point. You know, it, it is I'll, surprising. I'll tell you what, it doesn't surprise me. How's that? Oh, thank you. I um, came up because you said you was going to give me something. I had to earn it. No, yeah, you did say that. That's yeah, all the reason did. I'm up here. We can go back and look. I'm pretty sure that's not what I said. I said you needed to come up here and practice your singing so that oh. you can do your video or you can come up here and tell the whole crew. Why you're not doing your song? Oh, I mean, you stuff agreed to doing your behind song. the scenes, you know. I hear you, Danny. He did say he was going to participate. You did too. Uh, yes, well, me, me and you participate almost that you know, every not in the contest. There's a lot of people that don't see that. There's a lot of people in Shed Wars that, that don't see that. They still haven't, you know. We haven't got to the point that everyone in Ched Wars knows about the karaoke once a month. Um, it's a great time, and it's going to be about and, five weeks. I mean, honestly, I think I could spare the community with my awful singing, where they don't need to be subject 
to, li to listen to me sing. John, you have fun when you do it? When I do it with you, yeah. Well, I've already put mine up. You behind. Look, we got a question from Pass McQuaddy. Can you use potato water bald for potassium? With, uh, or is there too much starch? If you don't have any salt or anything in it, I've heard people use it and they enjoy it. They like using it. The starches doesn't really affect it. But if you're using any type of spices or salts in it, you don't want to put that in your uh, in your in your beds or in your um, pots. Yeah, you can even uh, when when you see me bake my banana peels and grind them up, you can even put your um, potato peels and bake them and grind them up. And put them in your gardens as well too. Is the water, um, <laughs> rice water also works. Right. Hey JT, what's she up to now? Thanks for stopping by. I know you're really busy. Hi, I hope JT. everything's going good with the move. Um, yeah. I mean, you could use anything. You know, just be cautious of your spices and especially salts. You don't want to put anything with any type of salt into your uh into your beds or anything you're growing in yeah definitely be careful with adding too much salt to your to your soil i i wouldn't you if there's not a lot of salt i i would probably take a chance and throw it on a compost pile but i wouldn't put it in any type of bed if there's any type of salt in it or spices you never know the salt's not good for it and the spices might have some type of reaction Smile. JT, JT wants me to smile. Hi, JT. About time. Tell him he needs to sing his song too. He's trying to back out. No, every time she tells me something, I, she yells at me. Did you need it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, John. Back to the fertilizer. It, it, that is similar to the, um, you know, the end result is is similar to the master blend. Um, I mean, I mean, I would recommend you guys use whatever you want. This is my first time trying it. Yeah. And because I bought this because I, me and Jeff, I was watching Jeff's channel to learn how to do indoor cracky systems. I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy a fertilizer. Well, the cracky system thing went down the tubes. I had the fertilizer. Says, I'm going to try using this on the soil. Yeah. And sure enough, I started reading it like, oh, you can use it on transplants, on plants in the soil. I'm telling you what. The plants absolutely love it. Every two weeks, I give you know I give them a nice watering, and boom, they love it. That's Maquati. That that's gonna look amazing. The herbs in a bird bath. That no, that that's gonna look really cool. Yeah, a great way to repurpose something. I just picked up uh, a bunch of sinks, a double stainless sink, sink, and a single sink, stainless. Uh, stainless steel sink and I think I got a, another two sinks and I got like two uh, composting barrel things and I used them uh, they came apart in two parts with the lid right. and I'm going to use those two parts like four parts as for potatoes but I'm going to use the lids for all herbs and I got like two other sinks as well too yeah, that's cool. I actually seen one of the guys that I fo follow on uh, YouTube use the sink because he he tried growing in all kind of stuff. He shows up one day. He's like, yep, I've grown in everything but the kitchen sink. So here you go. Wow. He, slaps, <laughs> he planted some beans in it hydroponically and he that's grew beans in the kitchen sink. Chris and, Chris and Gina, cosmic cultivators. Right. They, they grow on refrigerators. You name it. Yeah. He, uh, he was saying... The uh, super soil, it's probably similar or the same stuff that um, uh, cosmic cultivators are using. Yeah, that super soil stuff. I've never, I've never tried any of that. I've never. I, tried I, I don't think I've ever needed to. You know, I've... I think it's a good soil builder. Putting it, yeah. it, it adds all the uh, microbes, and the microbes, microbes, microorganisms, and everything in it. It has the trace elements. I was looking at it the other day. Seeing if that wouldn't help my raised beds in the back, but I don't even think that's going to help. I um, what I do up here is uh, I got a particular yogurt I eat, and it's only got uh, three uh, ingredients to it, and one of them's uh, active uh, bacteria. And so every time I rinse out the the yogurt, or I got 
yogurt past the expiry date, boom, it goes into the gardens or into my composter. That is um, because I'm on nervous. a septic tank, um, I have to get uh, I got to get a treatment system like a, a the bacteria for the septic tank to break everything down. That goes into the gardens and my uh, composter. Right, yogurt's an amazing way you get all those the the the, the bacteria and stuff that help your stomach is really good for putting out in the uh, in, in your compost. Also, that that is a great great idea. I, I, don't use, know it, I use it to start to, to start cheese to make some cheeses. You make cheese? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love making cheese. I make all kinds of cheese. You make goat cheese? Yeah. Well, cow cheese. Well, with cow milk, I don't have goat. I wish I had goats or oh, goat milk, like fresh goat milk, goat milk. You can't beat it. I'm sure the good boy would like goats around. I thought, uh, I thought you said we're going to try to keep this PG. It is. All I called you was goat boy. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Hey, UT, how's it going, brother? Petra Gamma Soil. I'm going to have to look that up. That's pretty cool, Lewis. Got those kitchen sinks. I don't know what it is about me, but I got a, I got a streak of Sanford and Son in me a mile wide, and I will bring up anything that's got some kind of use like that. That's pretty cool. That's a great idea. Using the water from his fish tanks to uh, filters yeah. for the uh, flowers. Yeah. Well, you know, there's people growing food in their in their aquarium. Exactly. Jan um, you know, bas it's basically an aquarium she's using for her aquaponics. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Jandera, right? Yeah. 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 There's people that that um, have got like aquariums in the house, mm -hmm. and they're growing mm -hmm. food in their aquariums inside the house year round. Not a lot. It's just little hobby things, you know. You can but, get small heads of lettuce and <clears throat> different things like that, depending on how big your tank is and how many fish you have in it. It yeah. actually helps. It, it it helps clean the water up, removes the yeah. ammonia and, and you know stuff from it. Yeah, you can sweet potatoes will grow like crazy in there. Yeah. Um, but you can grow anything hydroponics and and um, aquaponics. You know, yeah. it's it's some great stuff. For some reason, why I came back on here and turned my mic on. <laughs> that's why, uh, you know, that's why I love making the uh, fish fertilizer, fish emulsion in the backyard there. Boy, it stinks, but it's some really, really good, good stuff. How long has your fish uh, emulsion been out there cooking, John? That's that's been active for about five years now. Sure. But I keep adding to it every year. You know, fish racks and stuff. I keep just adding and adding to it. And trust me, it stinks. That is some powerful. That after, I mean, five years just sitting there stewing. Yep. Continually. And like you said before, it, it even the bones disintegrate into Every, it. Everything just eventually just disappears. Yep. So that that is some amazing stuff. It is very, very powerful. Very powerful in smell, but very, very nutritious uh, to put into the garden. And, you know, I can only do it basically is when I know the wife's going to be away for at least eight to ten hours. <laughs> or else I'm in big trouble. The Canadian proud. Get outdoors. Have a good day, brother. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by, brother. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Good day. The, uh, yeah, John, basically, the uh, – what. I know the, the roundup thing, you know, that was funny. But what I was telling you, short of the roundup, actually is what Mr. Donald used to use in the uh, in the field, which is almost the same setup of what you're using right there. He would he would mix the hydroponic solution just like he would for the uh like you would for the greenhouse, and he'd go out there and put it and he'd adjust it a little bit higher, a little bit lower at different times of the year. So if there were fruit and he'd go up a little bit higher. He had actually made, if you've seen the video, he had some two-inch PVC pipe with the caps on the end that he had drilled yeah. a little eighth of an inch hole 
he'd fill them up and leave a a two liter yeah. bottle on top of it to where it would just trickle out onto his tomato plants. Yeah, yeah. That's how exactly. he get the ten foot tall tomato plants with seven hundred pounds of tomatoes on them. Yeah, hey, Donald, he was awesome, awesome. Yep. I learned a lot from him. Awesome. You might hear some hollering. Maya just went in the back and she's gonna see that the sixteen chickens came in today. <laughs> Hey, there's something else about you raised dads outside. And I don't know whether this will apply to yours, Danny, or not. Um, and I can't remember what caused it. It seemed like it was a uh, seemed like it was a a, uh, a commercial bagged product that people were using, but it, it was causing their their grow beds to have a, a crust that oh. kind of develops in there. You're still. Yeah. And everything, no solid spots throughout the thing. No solid spots. It's amazing how well the roots grow. Pulling the tomatoes up last year, even the small tomatoes, the I was pulling up roots, the feeder roots on the tomatoes. Some of them were eight, ten foot long. Um, I, I added the pyrolite to it to help because the top six inches is ten inches. The top six inches was light and fluffy, and then the lower portions of it had kind of compacted. So I added the pyrolite and the peat moss try to hold a little bit more water and try to keep it a little bit more fluffy. You know, I could, I could take my fingers and push my fingers almost down into the dirt at the bottom. Wow, that ain't good, dude. It's slap full of, uh, of worms. You, you, you take a handful, you'll probably grab a worm. I didn't put one worm in it, but they're slap full of worms and they're, it's just not growing. I really think it's a pH issue that it's having. I would, I would, I would lean towards the pH test. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually I, I went to uh to Abbeville. Well, I've gone to two stores today to pick up a soil sample to send it off and see um before I put a whole bunch of dirt and everything in there if I can add lime or anything like that. Yeah, and I haven't been able to find one. Um but I, I will be doing that before I add a whole bunch of dirt. um I've seen on another channel this fella he uh what he did was took center blocks mm -hmm. and cement uh, and rebar. And in the holes, he put a shove a piece of rebar down there to keep the bricks from moving each hole, right? And he staggered them and uh, put cement in there. And that's how he made his raised beds. Put a whole bunch of logs, put a whole bunch of yard waste, and then dirt and more whatever, right? But uh, cement there, the, the cement bricks and the cement's got lime in it. So it's always going to forever have the lime in there. Yeah, um, I, I just have mine right now. I built it with some one by 10 pine. So there's another little bit of, you know, pH issues possibly. Um I wanted to use the wood that way I can, when it starts to rot, I can come back on the outside of it with some treated and not have the treated touching exactly where the, um, you know, the soil. Um, yeah, but treated nowadays, you don't have to worry about that. Right. But it's just, you know, in my head, I didn't want the treated built into it. And I had the, the pine was actually left over from when I, I put the wood on the outside of the old greenhouse. Um, so it, it only had to buy a little bit of it. I mean, I do a, I do PA, I pH my beds every single spring. I pH every spring. You just take it, soak it in water, take you a handful of something. No, I have, I have the, the gadget that I stick okay. in the soil, and it basically my pH is around six, between six two and six eight, right around there. Here's a question if you, uh, when you, I, I know most people just sprinkle out the uh, the lime to adjust it do you think it would help a little bit faster to adjust if i would mix it in water and you know spray it in in a liquid form to where it's it's saturated into the uh, stuff or you know oh, just, you could the just you could just why don't you just work it in it's the same thing when it rains you're basically getting the same thing what you mean by working it in mix it in water and, and no mix it in the well, I have the plants. I don't want to. I don't want to disturb the oh, plants. Oh, 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 oh! You need to add now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna. You could do it in a water soluble formula if you want. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, but then again, without without knowing your pH, if, you well, know, no, I'm gonna check the pH first. Yeah, check it first yeah. because if you don't want to just keep adding lime, and then all of a sudden you're you're way too alkaline, 
and then all of it, then that's not good either. So right. check it first, and then either you need sulfur to bring it down, or you need lime to bring it up. Right. One or the other. Well, I'm having issues. I actually, I, I've purchased it. I know I've talked about it before in, in Jeff's live stream and a couple other live streams. I purchased a lot of my uh, my fertilizers, you know, at the end of last year around October. One of my friends told me, hey, there's going to be a shortage. The price is going to go up. I actually tried to order some more calcium nitrate and Epsom salt, and it it wasn't even put on back order. I went to the, uh, because I hadn't heard from the guy at the feed store today, um, up to this point, it had been three weeks. I stopped by the day when I was going through town and asked him. He's like, they won't even put it on back order because they have no idea when they're going to be getting it in. Yeah, my calcium nitrate is about running out. And uh, I have been looking for some, and it's not that easy to come by. No, it's and, not. And the place that I did find it a few cities away from here, it was like triple the price. For one, one pound bag, it was like triple the price what I paid two years ago. I, I think two years ago I paid either seventeen or twenty dollars. It was twenty one dollars for a fifty pound bag of calcium nitrate, and seventeen dollars for a fifty pound bag of Epsom salt. Um, the last time that I ordered it, um, it was thirty seven dollars for a bag of calcium nitrate, and they didn't have any Epsom salt. Um, but it's it's is it. They were able to get it. I'm just, you know, now just putting that out there. You know, if you if you're thinking you're gonna need some uh, fertilizer, you might need to look into it. The triple twenty I bought, he asked me if I wanted to sell it back to him because he knew I had stocked up for it. Yeah. He asked me if I wanted to sell it back to him, and he told me he'd give me seventy five dollars a bag, and I paid, um, I think it was fifty one dollars a bag for a fifty pound bag. He was yeah, gonna give me, he was gonna give me twenty five dollars more than I paid for it, and he was still gonna make money off of it. I mean, like I, when I use the 2020, 20, I still have a bag I bought from Horse Tools, you know, four years ago, whatever it is. But right. I mean, the price now, even Horse Tools, the price is almost doubled. Almost doubled. Yep. It, it, it's it's scary. Um, you know, it, people tell me I was crazy. The the Master Blend, you can still get Master Blend. The price is going up on it. It's doubled since I ordered in October. You know, I ordered enough for two years or what I think would be for two years um, just to make sure. Jeff, go play, boy. Yes, Jeff. <clears throat> Jeff, you coming up? Oh, you still got 15 minutes of work. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it, it's getting hard to find. Jeff, I was showing them this stuff here that I'm using thanks to you. Works great, Jeff. This stuff thumbs up for me. For soil plants, not crack system. For soil plants, that stuff is awesome. Yeah, Jeff told me before I got on the live, he's like, you need to be outside doing something. I'm like, uh, I think I'm going to do a live. He's like, no, go outside and get started working. And the wind's bad. I'm going to float away. I'm too skinny to be working in the wind. I know. I feel ashamed. It's like 70 degrees outside, not a speck of wind, beautiful sunny. And I'm sitting here speaking to you, fine gentlemen. That's right. Can't get much better than this panel. Um, Eric, the triple the we use triple thirteen over here. It was seventeen dollars a bag when I bought it. I asked while I was at the feed store, it's up to thirty two dollars a bag. I'm a triple ten guy, triple ten for me. Well, we it's hard to find triple ten. Everything around here is triple thirteen. Yeah. Um, but the difference between the triple 13 and the triple 12s and all that, it's um, not water soluble. The water soluble formulas are having a lot more issues. People are having a lot more problems finding the water soluble than the time released. I use the regulated. I mean, the, uh, the slow release. 10, 10, right, 10. the time release. Yeah. 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 Those, those are easy to find. The triple 20 is a, a water soluble and the master blends are water soluble. The, um, <laughs> Calcium nitrates, all water soluble, and that's all stuff that larger farms and stuff use. And like bushgrass, they're going to get first choice on it, as opposed to people that's growing at their homes. Yeah, I mean the only really water soluble fertilizer I use is my homemade fish emulsion. It's pretty much the only water soluble that I use, and that's just to give them a, like a little snack, you know, once a month or something. Right. Go, there's a little snack. 
I just don't have the room to, to like the compost teas and the fish emulsions to be doing all that on my own. We don't have the room. Um, yeah, you, do. you have a plastic trash barrel, a plastic trash barrel with a lid, like a 30 gallon yes. plastic trash barrel with a black with a lid, and you, you pump some of that water from your bayou or rainwater, and you catch, you know, your catfish there. Just toss it in the barrel and you put a little bit of molasses in, like a half, you know, half a bottle of molasses. And don't worry. Give it about eight, nine months. What you do? You let the fish die in there or you keep feeding? No, no. I, I throw the racks in, like when I fillet the fish. But I'm going to say, if it, and then instead of, I throw the, all the racks of the fish inside of the thing and then once the microbes get to them you know their eyeballs right. are going to be like this big <laughs> and then at first when you're first starting it you're going to see maggots all yeah. over the place i mean there's just going to be hundreds of thousands of maggots and but they never turn to flies because you always have the lid on so they actually never turn into anything right they suffocate and then they fall in and within <laughs> eight nine months you put a stick in there and there is nothing but your fish emotion. I could promise you that my queen would not be happy with that. No, she wouldn't because my wife would not is not happy with me whenever I fertilize. And I don't have the I, I really don't have the space to You don't put have it. the space to put a trash barrel? Well, no, he, says he don't got the space to put it far enough away where he don't get in trouble. Oh, right. uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> mine's, that, I mean, mine's in the woods. <laughs> I, I'm actually, I, I am actually, you know, we're closing in a big section of the, uh, because we got new chickens. We're closing in a big section in the back along the bayou where we're working. We're going to fence it in to have more room for the chickens so where they have more room to be able to work, but to where we also be able to separate, you know, we're going to, I picked up 50 pounds of grass seed. We're going to plant the grass seed where the chicken coop is now. We're going to try to put them back and forth every two weeks to try to give them a little bit fresh grass in, instead you, of. What did ahead. you get? Laying chickens? Or yeah, laying hens. Laying hens? It, it's a, um, I, I got them from McMurray Hatcheries. They, uh, That's a lot of eggs. It's a large brown, brown egg laying hens is what we ordered, an assortment of them. So we're not sure exactly what we got. Um, when we get bigger, we'll, when they get larger, we'll be able to tell better. Which but ones were just given to you? I'm not sure what they were either. The lady didn't know. She just went in there and told them she wanted some brown egg layers. So we're going to have to wait and find out. We have no idea what they are. Oh, so, looks, these, so these that were given to you are small still? They're, they're probably three or four days older than the ones I got today. So they're, they're, they're not beating up on each other. They're not over a week old because they, they're not aggressive with each other. Normally when I put chickens that were a week older than the other chickens, the um, the bigger chickens were real aggressive and fighting and pecking with the smaller chickens. And that these right horrible. here, they, they just went straight together with each other and there wasn't no issues. So. That, that's usually recommended for when, when people start having children is, you know, just one after the other, get your number, and everybody grows happy together. So having them 26 years, 21 years apart is not ideal. And <laughs> <laughs> well, 21 years apart is ideal, but I mean, like, you know, I'd say four years apart where the eight-year-old wants nothing to do with a four-year-old. It's like, get away from me. Yeah, that's, there's a... Uh... Of the ten-year-old with a four-year-old, it's like, dude, I'm ten. You know, you're crazy. Get out of here. Maya's really good for the most part. She's, I think, nine years older than Colt. She's really good for the most part with it because, you know, unless she has a friend over here, and then Colt wants to play with the friend. Well, Maya's what, like sixteen now? Josh, uh, fourteen. 14. She's going to be fourteen, something yeah, like she's, that. She's already maturing to the adult yeah. stage, so she understands it's her little right. brother. He, you know. yeah. Yeah, 21 could. years is not ideal for me. It's yeah. not ideal for no. me either. No, sir. No, I'm going to be 60. When Colt graduates, I'll be 60. Uh, but, I mean, if I'd have, if me and Sheena would have met, you know, say three years, four years after my youngest daughter was born, she would have been 13. Who would have been 
Sheena would have. Okay. Sheena's, Sheena's only uh, she's seven years older than my oldest daughter. She's like twenty-seven, ain't she? Or twenty-four? She'll be, be thirty-five. Sheena's already thirty-five. She'll be thirty-five in in August. Yeah. yeah. That's she'll be, That's she'll be thirty-five in August. My oldest daughter's twenty-six, and my youngest daughter 26. is twenty-one, and Maya's fourteen, I think. 13 or 14. I'm bad with it. With, I don't remember how old I am. Sheena told me yesterday how old I was. That's how I knew I wasn't 48. My wife's birthday is Saturday, and I could not tell you her age. <laughs> she probably wouldn't want you to tell us either. Uh, she's she's uh, she's younger than I am, for sure. So. Danny slept in a tent for two months right outside the school waiting for Sheena, Sheena to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> She was 24 when we met. It's not my fault. I was 38. No, it's not your fault. It, it doesn't sound bad when you get older, but when you start getting, it's weird. It, it don't sound bad to me at all right now. If I find a 24-year-old coming around me, <laughs> uh, I'll camp out in a tent. I will camp out in a tent for two months. <laughs> she, she she put a thing on Facebook one time. She's like, uh, I know I'm not your first love or your first. I wish I would have been. I'm like, you can't say that. You was like, you were in kindergarten when my oldest daughter was born. Yeah, Robert's just saying that. He's got a girlfriend. Yeah. He's all set. Robert. You got a girlfriend, Mr. Robert? Can, uh, we see her? No. Can we see her on the videos since we can't see you? I said if there was a 24-year-old coming around me. Oh. I've got them. I mean, they go around me, but they don't, you know, get close. They don't stop. <laughs> no, it's like a shark going through a school of fish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they come back in behind me. That's because yeah, you use those little number number, you know, eighteen little hooks. You need like a really big, you know, circle hook. Hook them. You need a oh, bobber. You need a, you need a bobber. That's all you need. That's how you catch them young. Men. Try to catch a bobber. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> yeah, Robert, you have a girlfriend anyway. What are you talking about? John, don't don't get it started here. I'm not saying anything. Just, hey, there's only ten people in here. Let's go. And two of them's me. So I'm not saying anything <laughs> else it's, it's it's between me and Robert. I'll keep it between us, Robert. I'm sorry. That's yeah, sorry. let's let's keep it between us, because um, you know, I mean, after all, she is right around the corner from you for a reason. Yeah, that's a kept woman on the side. Hmm. Ah. She's not too far away from me. No. Hey that's there, Brother right. Forms Homestead. We're having a good day. We're kind of winding the chat down. It's starting to get uh, it, it's way off topic now. We're trying to get Mr. Robert to tell us who his girlfriend is. Now, here, here's my girlfriend right here, Britton Farms Homestead. She's right around the corner from me. I'll, I'll tell hey. you, I'll leave it at this. Danny, she's north of I-10. How's that? Well, so is Mr. Robert. Yeah, but he's still a hillbilly redneck. He don't <laughs> Cool, Mr. Robert, they say you need two 21-year-olds 20, two to keep you busy. I do not disagree. <laughs> I'm gonna say if I could, if I live through the first one, you know, then the second one should be a breeze, right? <laughs> a wrestling match with tag team. I don't know what we'd do, Lord. That ain't gonna happen. That's about like uh, Ed McMahon showing up with his dead self with a check for a million dollars. You know, it's not gonna happen. With his dead self, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go check the plumbing. I'll be back. Yeah. John is worried about that plumbing. He's always checking. He needs to go to the doctor and check that. He's going to check it till it breaks it off. I don't know. I guess you got to wiggle it. You know, it's, it's it, you know, workmanship <coughs> of being Cape God. It must be questionable. Hmm. I can't. I can do that when he's not here, huh, Mr. Robert? That's right. Wait, wait. What'd you do? I looked away. Nothing. Oh, okay. Look that's away. Good. Mm. Ah, I did see that. You didn't see nothing. 
<laughs> what are we going to do with you, man? <laughs> Root sniffing is taking over our community. Anybody, and then see, I'm going to have to find out something else to do with you. So you might as well get your money's worth and get all that in you want. <laughs> some kind of thing up in there. Go and enjoy yourself. But anybody that I catch root sniffing is going to get in trouble somehow. I tell you what, anybody that does the karaoke, I'm going to put this out there right now. No, anybody don't you that does the karaoke challenge cannot be issued penalties for root sniffing for one month. Now, is there any potential, you know, reason? Why somebody that's kind of so called obligated to do it can forfeit this challenge? Cannot do it? You know, or forfeit it? Like, I mean, what if there's a legitimate reason? I mean, I'd love to do this this challenge, but you know, what if there's a legitimate reason why I can't make it? You know? John, you could be doing the video right now. That's how easy it is. You and Mr. Robert, but y'all chose to come here. And I mean, I can get, I can cut this short so y'all can do that right now. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a big to do. It doesn't have to. What's Lewis? What are you smirking over there behind the background? Why don't you sing a song, Lewis? Why? Yeah. I'll break microphones. No, you can't break microphones. That's not true. I'd like to see you sing a song, Lewis. <laughs> Hey, John's, John put it out there. John's giving, uh, I, I'm, I'm donating a shirt. I'm, dona I'm also donating a shirt to the champion, to the winner. Yeah. Oh, Lord, there's a free shirt in it. Two shirts. Two shirts. Two shirts. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Rim, Rim went and knocked it out of the park last night with his guitar and his French song. He did. That was entertaining. It's like, man. Mm. I like, I, like, I like how he says, I don't know if I can play. It's been 10 years. Yeah, I ain't yeah, touched okay. my guitar in 10 years. Good yeah, thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. But you could see he felt very comfortable looking at the camera and singing. Oh, yeah. He was looking at it like, this is mine. Look, yeah. mine. I, I got this, fellas. I got yeah. this. Don't worry. You guys yeah. don't understand the thing I'm saying, but I got this. I, I understood <laughs> About 15 words throughout the song. I didn't understand that. I'm gonna have to get Pop to translate it. It, it is a catchy song. It's cool. But I did like the beat of it. I could imagine it is catchy because I, I did without knowing what he was saying. Following the music, it was pretty catchy. I wonder if closed caption would work on that song. Yes. And I'm wondering if if closed caption works on uh, John's Portuguese uh, "How to yes. Kill Corn" video. <laughs> I didn't even watch that. I turned it on and it, I was like, mm -mm. "No, Robert, it does work because I did it. I close captioned it back to me, and I, there was like one or two words that I missed that didn't translate correctly." But it translates yeah. it in the closed caption. Yes. Okay, I'm about to go check it out. I, I didn't watch it because, I, like, Rem song. Well, I basically, I'm speaking. I'm speaking in Portuguese. Right. So you have to translate it to English. And right. It'll tell you I everything I'm saying. I knew it wasn't English you were speaking. And it's I'm like, I, I have no idea. I don't think it's English. It's not like French. Now. French. I could catch a few words here and there and kind of understand this. I could see what you were doing, but it's like. Mm. Yeah. If, if closed captioning can, can pick up John, you know, and know what he's saying in Portuguese through Cape Cod, Boston, Yankee. You know, that's pretty powerful. But, you know, it can't touch the office. When the office get on there and talk, that closed captioning is nuts. Jeff, get him, Jeff. I've been trying to nail down a song that I feel comfortable singing. This and there's one came up literally like two days later. It's all right there. ready, Almost ready to go. About it looked good. Oh, Jeff, bringing in the penalties. Son, you need a penalty for doing that uh, that cockroach what, voice modulator thing. That, I, I, I almost, I almost, no, I liked it, but I almost kind of thought that was kind of cheating. Where 
we could yeah. really tell if he if he sings good or not. That's right. I mean, he yes, wasn't using yes, that. Solid. I mean, Danny, Danny, come on, you gotta admit that. Isn't that kind of like eh, cheating a little? Ever, no, it's not cheating. Everybody, I, I was telling Mr. Robert because you were late to the party. I was telling Mr. Robert. No, that, I was here the whole time. Oh, you was too scared to show up? I was just lurking. Oh. But no, I mean, there's a lot of people that, that do the voice modulation now. In, 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 On radio? Yeah, I heard the whole thing. It's not radio. something I like, but I, I, I did enjoy Jeff's. I enjoyed it too, but I kind of felt like, well, you know, it sounds good, but you know, I wanted to see if he can really sing. That's how he sings. I was just happy he did it. He got out of his comfort zone. He yes, didn't. He, did. he got out of his comfort zone. He's never sang on the karaoke lives. I think he's he's done it three times. He's hosted it, and he's never sang. And he did a video. That you know, a lot of people are gonna see. I think there was sixty views, sixty-five views on it. Yeah. Um, last time I checked, and uh, I did like it. It's it, it was I, different. I was not expecting yeah. that. When I heard, I was like, "Whoa, I'm like, this is totally different." No. I actually even thought of doing it myself, and I'm like, "Yeah, but Jeff already did it." No, I think you should do "Walking on Sunshine." Yeah, I'm gonna walk on sunshine already. I'm gonna sing in my Darth Vader voice. That'll be good. I'll do that. The problem is finding the song that I can sound somewhat like 30% decent. That's the problem. Uh, Danny, um, Danny, Danny, Danny did a fantastic, he did a great job. Yeah. The man can sing. He ain't yes. very funny. He's not pretty. He's not young <laughs> anymore, but by God, the boy can sing. He can. Yes. That was the morning after the karaoke, too. I know. Yeah. That was. You had you had your support cup. I said, oh like you, that's the like a is, security blanket right there. It's the night after the karaoke. Uh, what time we go to bed? Like three in the morning? Uh, I think it was one thirty. One thirty, and he's already up at like four o'clock in the morning doing whatever yeah. the hell he's. It's I got up at four. I drank a cup of coffee. Went outside, checked on the greenhouse. Yeah. Well, I came. I, I got up at four, started the coffee. Went outside, checked the greenhouse. Came back in, drank about a half a cup of coffee, and it, yeah, it wasn't doing good. Because then, weren't, weren't we talking on text at like five thirty, six o'clock yeah. in the morning? Yeah. Well, about six thirty. About six thirty in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got about five more minutes, and I'm you better have, to have a big chest, girl. Oh, wrong one. What is That's the one. Was that Wayne? Any man of mine never heard of it. Yeah. Britain Farms. I, I have. So. I have a serious issue with sleep a lot of the times. Uh, it's <laughs> it's like the later I stay up, the the less time I sleep. It, that. 3.30 to 4.30 in the morning is about as late as I can sleep, no matter what time I go to bed. I, I, I work know. for you when, you when you're young still, but wait till you get in your 60s. It I'm don't work no it, more. I'm not enjoying it in my late 40s. Hey, Danny, I don't know if, you, if you've ever heard of this, but do you know the average 80-year-old man actually has slept 26 years of his life? Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah. And that, that's that's averaging eight to eight and a half hours a, uh, a okay. night of sleep. A night, yeah. Well, imagine that. An 80-year-old man actually spent 26 years of his life sleeping. Yeah, that's too much. I agree. I it's totally depressing. agree. It's depressing. It's like for 26 years, I laid down in a bed sleeping for 26 out of my 80 years. That's if you slept everything in the bed, that's better than me. <laughs> I've slept plenty of hours in trucks at work and... You know, yeah. especially when I was younger, we were working 115, 116 hours a week. Yeah. We'd leave one location. We'd stop at a hotel room just long enough to take a shower, drive to the next location, yeah. you know, sleep in the truck till whenever the people got there, six, seven o'clock in the morning, start working again. Then, you know, 18, 21 hour days. Oh, my. I, I'd never want to do that again. 
give me four hours of sleep, five hours of sleep a night. Yeah. I'm, good. I'm good. I like that five, six hours. If I start get, if I get more than eight hours of sleep, I'm grouchy. Oh. Hey. If I can get six hours of sleep, I'm, I'm pretty happy. You can, if you can get your phone straightened out, would be even better. <laughs> the, the what now? I didn't say anything. Go ahead. Oh, now you said something about my phone. No, I said get if you can get your, your phone straightened out, it would be great. <laughs> yeah, it's a dang amber alert, man. They they got these amber alerts, you know. You're sitting there, and then all of a sudden, Excuse your phone me, starts God. going nuts. And uh, like, well, thanks, thanks for taking over my phone to let me know that somebody in another state is, yeah. you know. So they, uh, they they started. It's not the Amber Alerts, but the uh, the warning, the severe weather warnings. They send it to your phone, whether you subscribe to it or not. So yeah, you're sleeping in the middle of a hurricane. You finally get to sleep, and all of a sudden, you got five cell phones in your house start going off and it all seems like they go off a second apart. It's like, Oh my God. You know, you wake up like something's wrong and it's like, Oh, there's a possibility of strong winds. No joke. We're in a hurricane. The wind's been blowing 65 miles an hour for eight and a half hours. Now it's going to get higher. Okay. Let me sleep. One thing that annoys me is we have all, you know, the Googles on the thing, the Google in the bathroom, the Google yeah. here, the Google on the cell phones. And it's like, I'll ask this one a question. It'll answer, then my phone will answer a minute later, then the bathroom one answers a minute later, and, and my wife's phone answers, and the kid's phone answers. It's, it's like they, you ask one Google in the house, and it goes to everybody. <laughs> everybody. John. John is the last man in, on the earth I thought would ever have any of that kind of stuff. I don't. You know. My wife has it. I just use it when I feel the need to use it. John, it ain't mine. you got one right there that you can ask? I do. Ask, ask Google where real, where does real vanilla extract come from? Okay, Google. What, where does real vanilla extract come from? On the website nationalgeographic.com, they say the FDA regards castorum as natural flavoring. Just in time for holiday cookie season. Oh, it's not going to do it. Vanilla flavoring in your baked goods and candy could come from the anal excretions of beavers. Beaver butts secrete a thing called the animals used to mark their territory. <coughs> Where does pure vanilla extract come from? Okay, Where Google, shut up. <laughs> That's enough of that. <laughs> the anal excretions of beavers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that. We yeah, have beavers and... Um, Actually, from uh, pine trees. Really? Yeah, they make it from pine trees, uh, and they're making artificial vanilla out of oil. Yeah. So, Danny, you are a vanilla, a fake vanilla extract pusher. Yep. <laughs> it goes right along with your root sniffing. You're out yep. there in the right. business. Everybody in the chat, I hope y'all had a great time. I'm going to have to get off of here so I can get the little dude off the bus. Um, if y'all not subscribed to Lewis, go check him out. Lewis is a great guy. Uh, Mr. Robert Holmes, Ted Aquarius is a great guy. John's John. Um, uh, John's a great guy. Also, uh, everybody in the chat, y'all, you know, y'all go ahead, check out everybody else. Get subscribed up some great people and, uh, y'all have a great one. Y'all got anything to say? Yeah, I do. Robert, don't make us captains look bad. You better get the singing, sir. What about you, uh -huh. John? I'm not speaking I'm to me. I'm speaking you. for him. <laughs> I'm going to catch up to you. Make, make, us, make us captains look bad because if you make us look bad, by golly, start singing, Robert. You guys have a wonderful day. Lewis, you got anything to say, brother? All right. See y'all guys later. Yep. Sorry, Daddy, I'll see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Robert. I'm sorry. I messed up your thing. Nah, I can oh. do that again as practice as a warm up. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate you having me up, and uh, I'll send you $5 for saying the good things about me. Thanks, brother. Oh, it's more than that. It's like 40 pounds of uh, Jeff done put it to y'all. So mm. If you don't do your video, it's, like, it's up to like 200 pounds now if you don't do your video. Well, uh, uh, bye. So, <laughs> South Louisiana, right. boy, you got to love it. Later. Yep, y'all grow that. Take care, Louis.